Hello, my name's Michael Keneally and I'm here filming with Douglas Chamberlain at the Cave of the Morrigan, Oanigat Cave. And the Morrigan is of course the war goddess of the ancient Irish and we'll be talking about how that is to be understood. And the important thing is that this cave is just in front of and underneath Rathcrogan Mound, which was the coronation mountain of the kings and queens of Connaught. And so clearly the message is that a kingdom does need a king or, you know, some government body which, you know, rules a kingdom, just as we ourselves need a sense of self which rules ourselves and chooses what we do. But one of the important foundations underneath that is to be able to defend ourselves and it's no accident that the coronation mound of the kings and queens of Connaught was built on the cave of the war goddess and so very briefly the themes that come down to us for Oanigat cave are fertility and mating the morrigan is often associated with erotic themes and fertility because of course the continuance of a kingdom depends on fertility. Um, also the cave was seen as a portal to the underworld, to the other worlds of the ancient Celts. The ancient Celts had identified a number of other worlds that overlap with this world and interpenetrate it and we can gain great wisdom and vision insight from these other worlds if we can handle it and indeed notice that there's a hawthorn tree over the mouth of the cave and hawthorn has beautiful 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 blossoms does that mean that the other worlds are beautiful 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 well, if you think that, you're missing something, you're being escapist, you're in denial. Because, of course, the hawthorn also has thorns. And some people forget that. So all these states of consciousness have a side to them that can be incredibly damaging unless you understand them. And this is true of the Morrigan herself. Because although she is the war goddess... She is not a mascot for aggressive, twisted people to express their nastiness. She is infinitely higher than that. She's a face of the divine. She represents difficult situations that come up in our life, maybe one battlefield after another. And they can be so distressing, they can take over our mind, they can make us weak. They can even cause us to commit suicide. But that's not the way she calls us to understand our battlefields. If we understand our battlefields in the wrong way and the weak way or the super aggressive way, then we end up corpses on the battlefield over which the Morrigan screams her phantasm horror sound. What she really calls us to do is to perceive the divine potential within each battlefield. And she loves us, actually, and calls us to become the warrior. And this brings, us, brings me to a, another point about the cave. It definitely was an initiation place for rites of passage for young warriors, young men and women who wanted to move from being you know, teenagers to becoming warriors and they came here to spend overnight or longer on vision quests, on initiation ceremony and the legend of Cahulin, the great hero of Ulster in the north of Ireland came here with two of his fellow young teenagers to undergo the initiation and two of them were horrified at the demonic cats, the phantasms that arose and ran shrieking from the cave and died. But of course the whole point is, these phantasms that appear so demonic and malevolent are in fact in our mind. 
even if they're in the external world, they're the result of us not perceiving their nature in a divine way. Even if they occur in the external world, they're the result of our not seeing the divine potential. Because the Morrigan loves us as one of her warriors. And her aim is for us to see situations correctly, to understand her as a dark goddess like Kali or Niriti correctly, and thus evolve and thus progress so that we become stronger, so that we become more in connection with our divine everlasting soul that incarnates and incarnates and incarnates, so that we realise connection with that spark of the divine that is us and that is indeed in our physical body as a brightest spark of light. That's what she's really about. She isn't an F.U. dysfunctional um, woman that she's actually portrayed. That's the misunderstanding of Lee Morrigan. And indeed this was a place of of vision and the Morrigan is associated with vision and prophecy and indeed it was seen as the abode of demonic creatures that issued forth malevolent pigs, wool, werewolves, um, horrific cats that issued forth every Sawai. But again you have to look at the negative role of, of, of your mind, of my mind, that where we don't see these challenges of dealing with darkness, of dealing with awful things correctly. And that's what's actually issuing forth. That is the battlefield where we can become heroes of the Morrigan who actually loves us. So I just want to say that this cave has, lies beneath Rathcrogan Mound, which is just behind us over there, um, it was a lot bigger than it is now. It had a wooden structure on top where the kings of queens of Connaught were crowned and it had lines of sight going to Crowpatrick Mountain and other sacred sites in the west of Ireland. It was a geomantic powerhouse. Um, but, th but, but, but this was where the real ultimate sovereignty and power lay. And in fact, there was an archaeological dig, I think in 1864, something like that. I've got the date somewhere in these notes. Samuel Fergus in 1864. And he mapped it. And when he mapped it in 1864, it was surrounded by um, um, like a, a circular mound. And um, it was 20 yards in diameter. But unfortunately, when this little lane was constructed, part of the mound was knocked down. And with modern farming methods, the, the mound was ploughed out. But this was not a defensive mound. This was not a defensive wrath. This mound was to keep the immense powers of darkness and the other world in. And so many of the sacred places of Ireland have a mound about them to keep the dangerous, fearsome, sometimes apparently unmanageable forces of darkness in. Uh, so it was a potent, feared and dangerous place was, the, was Oanigat Cave. And the mound and this entrance controlled access between the living and the dead. And the Morrigan and her creatures were perceived as indestructible, terrifying, dangerous, threatening. But of course, as I said, it's a matter of perception and she wants us to develop the true perception of the spiritual warrior. And she herself is a shapeshifter. She can appear to us in many different forms, like eel and wolf. Um, and and there's a lesson in each of this, so she's called a, tut I'm sorry, a tutelary shapeshifter. And it's all linked to your sovereignty and therefore your possession of the material need, uh, things you need materially to survive and live in this world. Cattle in the case of the Iron Age culture where she was worshipped. And of course you need fertility if your line is to survive and you need sovereignty and these are her gifts and she appears under these different guises as a 
hag and as a beautiful young maiden, as a heifer and an eel. Um, she took particular affection towards Cahulin, who passed the warrior initiation test here in this cave. But he, I mean, he was only 17 when he fought his great battle uh, in the cattle raid of Cooley, and he just didn't really understand the sort of erotic, spiritually, ultimately transformative love that the Morrigan is. And so when she appeared to him in her various guises, he said, well, you know, don't bother me, I'm cleaning my weapons, just, you know, I'm a warrior. <clears throat> so he actually didn't understand her. So the last time they met, he was on his way to the final great battle of the cattle raid of Cooley. And who did he meet? A hag washing blood-stained clothes at the ford, the washer at the ford, and he saw that the clothes were his, the blood was his, and indeed he died at that battle. But so brave he was that he tied himself to a standing stone so as to keep fighting, and as he was in his final death agonies, she perched beside him as a crow, affirming that she loved him as he died. He was her warrior, although he didn't pass the last few tests that she offered him. So, basically this cave is highly charged energetically and visionary. It's a most potent place from prehistory. It predates all the many mounds and sacred sites round here. It is the most totally central sacred feature of this Iron Age landscape. Um, and indeed, ancient Irish manuscripts describe it, describe the Morrigan emerging from it, and that it is her fit abode. It's right for her. And it's said that for, you know, she has a bull and a cow inside the cave, reinforcing the sacred fertility of her essence. Um, the manuscripts also uh, describe it, as I said, as a point of entry to the other worlds, and indeed the entry point to hell. That's obviously Christian terminology, but yes, it is the entry point to hell if we don't bring divine understanding to the hellish circumstances that can happen in our life. Um, and the creatures described in these 12th century manuscripts are malevolent pigs, werewolves, horrific birds, demonic cats and they're associated with famine, destruction and pestilence. Now, yes, in the external world we may have to deal with famine, destruction and pestilence, the breakdown of the material circumstances of our life. But it's a matter of perceiving them as spiritual opportunities. And it's a matter of dealing with the mind games and obsessions and weakening repetitive scripts that so often are there because of our past lives we incarnate to deal with those difficult karmas and for example because of the parenting where we were pushed into really dysfunctional scripts that would prevent us from becoming who we are, who we were meant to be. Um, so in the notes attached to this video I, I mention other emanations from the cave but particularly as I said you know, the most important thing, and we go, it, it is the initiation, play, initiation place of young warriors. And we're actually going to go into the cave in a bit to do a separate video where you can share in the journey of initiation to become a warrior of the Morrigan. Cahulin went in with his two mates. They failed and died. He succeeded and earned her love. Um, also... It's important to realise that it's a vision place, that time is different, and uh, the tale of Nerai, the adventures of Nera, recount how um, a noble called Nera was near here, and he saw the attack and burning of the nearby fortress of Queen Maeve and her husband Ailil. And he believed it. But in fact, he then went back to the to the royal fortress nearby and found it wasn't burned. But then, strangely, he entered the other world where he met a beautiful woman by whom he had a son and she gave him cattle and she said, no, 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 
you have misunderstood prophetic vision. The destruction of the royal fortress is not this Sawain, it is next Sawain. So he went back and he warned Queen Maeve and her husband that the attack was coming and they tried to fight it, but of course they couldn't. The destiny was foreordained. So this is the sort of world you're dealing with when you go in for vision work in this cave. So I think what I'm going to do now is end this preliminary presentation. We're going to go inside the cave and there we are going to become young warriors going through their rite of passage. And just to say that there are a number of, web, of um, videos on this website about the Morrigan and the other gods and goddesses of the ancient Irish and Druid mystical energy work etc. So you can watch those by subscription and if you want to go further into a tutor assisted course you can enrol on the relevant course of my Druid Forest School website. Indeed where I refer to your astrology as you work through the course. And indeed you can also buy paintings by Douglas Chamberlain from this website. Thank you.